I am Nathanael Cyrilli, working as an assistant lecturer for Mohimbil University of Health and Allied Sciences in the School of Public Health and Social Sciences in the Department of Development Studies. Uh, today, I'm going to take you through the research problem as an important topic for preparing your research proposals and different research projects. The learning objectives for this session are, one, understand the key terms of writing a problem statement. Two, differentiate the research problem from a decision problem. Third, identify the sources of a research problem. And fourth and last, understand the key steps in writing the problem statement. Objective one, definition of key terms. A research topic. A research topic is defined as a broad general area that one expects to investigate. This can be a concept, example training, employment, service delivery, disease arena, customer satisfaction, and so forth. Or the broad area can be situation, example sepsis, post-surgery, shortage of human resources for health in Tanzania, poor response to treatment among clients attending certain clinic, or shortage of water in rural villages in Tanzania, and the like, and the like. Another important term that we should understand, a research statement, this is a comprehensive statement that specify exactly what is being studied. A research statement should have six elements. The first element is information about the research topic that deemed the study. In other terms, this is the background. The second element is the scope of the problem, that is magnitude of the problem. This can be expressed in terms of quantitative numbers or can be explained in terms of the depth, that is the qualitative. And three elements that is equally important is the significance of studying the problem. Why should, it be, why should this problem be studied now? The fourth element is the anticipated influence of the findings. How will the findings influence the police? How will the findings influence decision making? What will the findings contribute to the society and to the nation at large? And the fifth element is the general characteristics of the population of interest. Who are they going to be the study participants or study respondents or the subjects? And lastly, but equally important, is the overall aim or objective of this study. A third important term that will be defined is the research problem. A research problem is a situation or circumstance that requires a solution to be described, explained, or predicted. It is an unsatisfactory situation that he wants you to confront. And again, for it to be a research problem, there must be an individual or group to whom the problem can be attributed to. And for a situation to be researchable, there must be more than one possible answer or situations or solutions or premises. Now, what is the difference between a research problem and a decision problem? A research problem should have more than one possible solution. This is to say, for instance, the shortage of medical supplies in rural health centers in Tanzania. More than one possible cause or solution should exist in this situation. For instance, the shortage of medical supplies in rural health centers in Tanzania can it be due to one, Failure to order adequate stock in time, which may be due to failure to predict the demand or due to limited financial planning capacity. Or it may be due to delay in supplying of the order by the medical store department, which may also be due to poor infrastructure and thus delay along the way transporting the required commodities and supplies or unavailability of the ordered supply in the stock. Or another possible cause for the shortage of medical supplies in rural centers in Tanzania can be the sudden change in health certain behavior by rural population and hence increasing the demand of medical supply. This may be due to health promotion campaign or disease outbreak and other reasons. For a situation to be researchable, there must be an individual 
or group to whom the problem can be attributed to. That is to say, the research should have benefit to group of people or to whole community. For instance, in the previous example of shortage of medical supply in rural Tanzania, solving the problem of shortage of medical supplies will benefit the rural population and thus consequently the whole nation. For instance, in Tanzania, having a healthier population in rural areas will increase the agricultural supply, which is the backbone of the economy and for the healthier of people in town by the supply of food coming from the farmers in rural areas. Therefore, if only one cause or possible solution exists, then this turns from a research problem to a decision problem. And if there is no benefit attributed to carrying out the research, then there is no need of carrying that research. It is a decision that is needed to solve this problem. A well-defined study begins with a clearly defined problem. According to Albert Einstein, the formulation of research problem is often more essential than its solution. And probably defining a research problem is the most difficult stage in your proposal. The problem identification and explanation affect the quality, usefulness, effectiveness, and efficiency of the research more than any other part of the research plan. The research problem is the reason the research is being undertaken. And it is the written problem description that is the only credible evidence that a clear understanding of the issue that is to be researched has been achieved. Now let us look at the sources of research problems. Research problems can be identified via colleagues in profession, talking to colleagues in the classroom, in the work area, or in professional meetings. You can realize that there are things or situations that need to be problematized and researched. Or research problems can be identified from ongoing research projects. When you are carrying projects on vaccine development, you realize that within the several stages, there is other situation that we are not predicted and you need to research on them to see how you can continue with successful development of the vaccine. Or when you are carrying a research project about empowering local people on health seeking behavior, you realize that there is unpredictable attitudes, then you need to carry a study on what their attitude about this project that's going on. Also, you can get research problems from literature review, going through different literatures in other places, what they have done, and the contextualize to your situation. Another can be from practical experience. From the work setting, where you are working, you realize that there are things that are not moving as how it is supposed to be ideal from the literature and books. Expert opinions. Expert may advise you that there is a gap in this situation, that you need to carry a study to understand this problem and probably advise for solution. And most often, government directives. The government may want you to understand and take actions on certain situations, and health may call expertise to carry research on that aspect. A good research problem comes from thorough literature review around the identified issue or problem. Now, having seen the definition of terms and the sources of research problems, now let us turn to another objective that is writing the problem statement. Before writing the problem statement, you need to identify the field that is either your work in health, business, law, or any other. In this case, we say identify the forest. When you have identified your field or the forest, you need to identify the topic you want to study. If you are in health, for instance, you would like to understand maybe malnutrition. If you are in business, maybe clients' retention. If you are in law, maybe forensic investigation or bacteriology and the like. So in this case, say, now you identify the tree you want to learn. After having identified the forest and the tree, now you have to identify the subtopic where you want to focus your study. In this case, for instance, if the topic is malnutrition, now we want to understand the causes of malnutrition among HIV patients. If it was client retention, 
Now we want to understand maybe the factors influencing clients' attrition. And for instance, if you choose your foreign investigation, now you would like maybe to understand what are the strategies for handling forensic evidences. And if it was bacteriology, maybe your focus is to look on mycobacterium tuberculosis sensitivity to rifampicin. In this case, we say you identify the branch where you want to land within the tree in the forest. After identifying the branch, now you have to identify the sub subtopic. That is, you read around to understand what is known, what is not known, and you identify the gap. In this case, you get an understanding of the branch you want to land. Having understood the prerequisite for problem statement writing, you need to know now three important steps for writing the problem statement. The first important step is writing a statement on ideal situation. Here, you are trying to respond to the answer of what is required to be. For instance, in the example I gave about shortage of medical supply in a rural health center, the ideal situation is that the supplies should be in the health center. The second statement should be the statement on a real situation. In this case, you want to understand what is the existing situation. In this case, you explain what is happening. Taking a good example of the previous example on shortage of supply at the rural health centers, the existing situation is the shortage of supply in the rural health centers. Having written the first statement and the second statement, now you write the third statement. That is the statement of the consequences or statement of urgency. Here, you have to show the urgency and need of doing something at this particular time. Having written the three statement, connect the first and second statement with the words like however, but, regardless. And this problematize the second situation into a problem statement. The urgency here is the state that the solution is needed right now. There is no time to wait, and this is an important stage in writing the problem statement. The ideal situation, this is the situation how things were or are supposed to be. And the real situation is what depicts what is on the scene. It is how things are now. Now looking at an example of human resource for health shortage in Tanzania, the ideal statement could be well-retained human resource for health is an important component for a responsive health system. And the government of Tanzania has tried to develop and adopt different strategies in ensuring retention of the health workers. The real situation could be retention of human resource for health at the rural areas is among the biggest challenges facing the health system in Tanzania. And most of the adopted strategies have been top-bottom approaches. And the bottom-top approaches are too costly. And most of the poor resource statistics have failed to bear. The, the top-bottom approaches also have less or no community involvement in their proposal. And with the first and second statement, the last statement or the third statement that the statement of origins could be the bottom top for approach human resource for health strategies and what facilitate or hinder the implementation is understudied. What is known anecdotally is that community reception, good working relationship between local authorities and health workers, valuing the health workers and the place of origins of the health workers can contribute in the retention of human resource or health workers in the districts. Therefore, this is study seeks to explore the bottom top human resource for health retention strategies and how to facilitate or hinders the implementation. Having done this, connect the first and second statement with words like however, or but, or regardless. And in that case, then you have a problem statement reading like well human resource well-retained human resource for health is among important component for responsive health system. The government of Tanzania has tried to develop and adopt different strategies in ensuring retention of health workers. However, retention of human resource for health in rural areas is among the biggest challenges facing the health system in Tanzania. Most of the adopted strategies have been top-bottom approaches. The top-bottom approaches are to cost most of the poor resources district have failed to be here, and the top-bottom approaches also have less 
or no community involvement in their proposition. What is known is that the bottom top human resource for health retention strategies and why what to facilitate or hinder the implementation is understood. What is known in the is that community reception, good working relationships between local authorities and health workers, valuing the health workers and the place of origin of the health workers can contribute in the retention of health workers in the districts. This is third therefore seek to explore the bottom top human resource for health retention strategies and what to facilitate or hinder the implementations. Things to note. In the course of developing a research problem and problem statement, start thinking about operational issues. Think about the feasibility of your study. Think about time, money, and manpower. Also think about the relevance of this study. Think about how practical it will be. Think about it starts to the policy. Think about the existing policies and where your findings will be placed. And think about the usefulness of your findings. It is also important to think about clarity. Be clear. Translate your findings to avoid dual meanings. Do not allow someone to misinterpret your findings because you are not clear. And it is important to take note of the issues. How you will protect the rights of the research participant, how you will communicate the findings, and how you will store findings. The language used in writing the problem statement should be clear and simple, should be concise, should show the urgency or need of addressing this problem and should have support statements. That is showing evidence of what is known, that is existing situation, or what is ideally supposed to be. And they should be objective. Avoid it to be emotional. Be objective to what you want to start and what you want others to understand from your research problem statement. And finally, but not least, avoid emphasizer and ensure coherence. In most cases, problem statements combine the past, present, and future tense. And it is dominantly passive. Although, sometimes there is a component of activeness or active voice. Some of the challenges that many people encounter during writing the problem statement comes from lack of focus, that there are many things you want to look at but you lack focus on exactly what you want to understand. Sometimes researchers are over ambitious. They want to study many things within limited time and limited resources and hence they face to have a clear problem statement. Again, lack of clarity that sometimes researchers fail to take enough time to problematize the situation and write and clarify and put clear what really they want to understand. Another challenge is the poor articulation. The problem has not been articulated well, that linking the ideal situation and the real situation is missing. And sometimes people fail to show the state of urgency, why this situation should be studied now and not tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone through our four objectives of understanding the terms for writing the problem statement, differentiating between the problem statement and the decision of problem, identifying the sources of research problem, and understand the key steps in writing the problem statement, it is my hope that now you will be able to write a concise and short, clear problem statement for your research proposals. I wish you all the best and goodbye.